Chairman Lucas, Ranking Member Lovegren, and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to discuss AI innovation with you. I deeply appreciate the work you are doing to advance and guide it in the US. My name is Clément Delangue, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Hugging Face. I'm French, as you can hear from my accent, <laughs> and moved to the US 10 years ago, barely speaking English. With my co-founders, Julien and Thomas, we started this company from scratch here in the US as a US startup, and we are proud to employ team members in 10 different US states today. I believe we could not have created this company anywhere else. I am leaving proof that the openness and culture of innovation in the US allows for such a story to happen. The reason I'm testifying today is not so much the size of our organization or the cuteness of our emoji name, Hugging Face. <laughs> and contrary to uh, what you said, Chairman Lucas, I don't hold a PhD like all the other witnesses. Uh, but the reason I'm here today is because we enable 15,000 small companies, startups, nonprofits, public organizations, and companies to build AI features and workflows. Collectively, on our platform, they have shared over 200,000 open models, 5,000 new ones just last week, 50,000 open data sets, and 100,000 applications ranging from data anonymization for self-driving cars, speech recognition from visual lip movement for people with hearing disabilities, applications to detect gender and racial biases, translation tools in low resource languages to share information globally, not only with large language models and generative AI, but also with all sorts of machine learning algorithms, with usually smaller customized specialized models in domains as diverse as social productivity platforms, finance, biology, chemistry, and more. We are seeing firsthand that AI provides a unique opportunity for value creation, productivity boosting, and improving people's lives, potentially at a larger scale and higher velocity than the internet or software before. However, for this to happen across all companies and at a sufficient scale, for the US to keep leading compared to other countries, I believe open science and open source are critical to incentivize and are extremely aligned with American values and interests. First, it's good to remember that most of today's progress has been powered by open science and open source. Like the attention is all you need paper, the bird paper, the latent diffusion paper, and so many others. The same way, without open source, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Keras, Transformers, Diffusers, all invented here in the US, the US might not be the leading country for AI. Now, when we look towards the future, open science and open source distribute economic gains by enabling hundreds of thousands of small companies and startups to build with AI. It fosters innovation and fair competition between all. Thanks to ethical openness, it creates a safer path for development of the technology by giving civil society, nonprofits, academia, and policymakers the capabilities they need to counterbalance the power of big private, of big private companies. Open science and open source prevent black box systems, make companies more accountable, and help solving today's challenges like mitigating biases reducing misinformation, promoting copyrights, and rewarding all stakeholders, including artists and content creators, in the value creation process. Our approach to ethical openness combines institutional policies, such as documentation with model cards pioneered by our own Dr. Margaret Mitchell, technical safeguards, such as staged releases, and community incentives, like moderation and opt-in, opt-out datasets. There are many examples of safer AI thanks to openness, like Bloom, an open model that has been assessed by Stanford as the most compliant model with the EU AI Act. All the research advancement in watermarking for AI content, some of that you can only do with open models and open data sets. In conclusion, by embracing ethical AI development with a focus on open science and open source, 
I believe the U.S. can start a new era of progress for all, amplify its worldwide leadership, and give more opportunities to all that it, like it gave to me. Thank you very much. Absolutely, and thank you, uh, Mr. DeLong. And I would note probably that there would be some of my colleagues who would note that your version of English might be more understandable than my Oki dialect. <laughs> but setting that issue aside, I now recognize Dr. Chowdhury for five minutes for her testimony.